Hi guys, it is another beautiful moonlit and frosty night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Wednesday night. It is November 9th, 2022. So as hard as I'm trying to avoid all the various dog and pony shows, you know, a little bit of good news, uh, I guess, coming out of the dog and pony show on this side of the pond yesterday. So it appears that civil war and outright fascist dictatorship. I, I, I mean, you know, the in-your-face uh, level of uh, fascist dictatorship uh, has been held off for at least two more years. So now we can think of something else to talk about uh, than the impending civil war. So anyway, it, it, <laughs> there's been some really funny shit coming out of, you know, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. I, I do appreciate all of my, uh, my trickster listeners seeing if I can withstand making a comment about the, and it's getting tougher because there is there are some funny stories coming out of that uh, complete uh, waste of hot air. But anyway, with all of that, you know, trying to dodge all of those, I came across this one a couple of days ago in the, right here in the mainstream media. Do you remember this fellow named John Stossel? I guess that's how you pronounce S-T-O-S-S-E-L. I used to be a fan of this guy. I, I mean, I like the guy, John Stossel. Hadn't heard from him, and I, good Lord, I hadn't heard from that dude in 25 years. I see a picture of John Stossel. He looks just like he did 25 years ago. I mean, the guy is not aged a day. But anyway, I'm glad to see John. Is the, you know, I, I feel like that John Stossel is probably a Trump tard. Uh, but even so... I do uh, <coughs> like the guy, you know, he's a professional whiner is what he is. His ranch, <coughs> he has a very understated kind of a whiny rant style, but it's always appealed to me. And I'm going to put the little dog down. The little dog seems to have found a mousy in the tiny house. Is there a mousy or not? Where's that mousy? There's a mousey up there. Where's that mousey? You know there's a mousey in this housey. Anyway, we're going to let the dog go find the mousey. And we're going to see what John Stossel is whining about uh, this week. And it's too bad because this is just part one uh, of this column in this video, which... Uh, apparently he's coming back with part two, so maybe some of the things he did not mention in this short column he will mention uh, in part two, although I doubt it. But take it away, John Stossel, what's on your mind? Inconvenient facts about electric cars. There you go. John Stossel actually looks younger than he did 30 years ago. Okay. Take it away, John. Electric car sales are up 66% this year. President Joe Biden promotes them saying things like, quote, the great American road trip is going to be fully electrified. And there is no turning back. Yes, we now have a car salesman. Uh, <laughs> good Lord, since when did the president of the great, this great country turn into a car salesman? To make sure we have no choice in the matter, some left-leaning states have moved to ban 
gasoline-powered cars altogether. California Governor Gavin Newsom issued an executive order banning them by 2035. Oregon, Massachusetts, and New York copied, copied California. Washington State's politicians said they would make it happen even faster by 2030. 30 countries also say they will phase out gasoline-powered cars. But this is just dumb. It will not happen. It's magical thinking. <clears throat> in my new video and in this column, I point out some inconvenient facts about electric cars, simple truths that politicians and green activists just do not seem to understand. Says physicist Mark Mills of the Manhattan Institute, quote, electric cars are amazing, but they will not change the future in any significant way as far as oil use or carbon dioxide emissions, close quote. Okay. Inconvenient fact number one, selling more electric cars will not reduce oil use very much. Says Mills, quote, the world has 15, 18 million electric vehicles now. If we somehow get to 500 million electric cars, that would reduce oil consumption by about 10%. That's not nothing, but it does not end the use of oil." Close quote. Most of the world's oil is used by things like, quote, airplanes, buses, big trucks, and the mining equipment that gets the copper and all the rest of it to build the electric cars. Close quote. <clears throat> Even if all vehicles somehow did switch to electricity, there is another problem. Electricity isn't very green. I laugh talking to friends who are all excited about their electric car, assuming it does not pollute. They go silent when I ask, where does your car's electricity come from? They don't know. They have not even thought about that. Inconvenient fact number two. <clears throat> Although driving an electric car puts little additional carbon into the air, producing the electricity to charge its battery adds plenty. Most of America's electricity is produced by burning natural gas and coal. Just 12% comes from wind or solar power. Auto companies don't advertise that. Yes, says Ford's Linda Zhang in a BBC interview, quote, electric vehicles in general are better and more sustainable for the environment. There's that word again. She's a Ford engineer, I say to Mills. She's not ignorant. She's not stupid, he replies, but ignorance speaks to what you know. You have to mine somewhere on earth 500,000 pounds of minerals and rock to make one electric car battery. Close quote. 
American regulations make mining difficult, so most mining is done elsewhere, polluting those countries. Some mining is done by children. Some mining is done in places that use slave labor. Even if those horrors did not exist, mining itself adds lots of carbon to the air. And although he didn't mention there, they were talking about how mining, uh, I have heard everything is going to increase, uh, you know, in the green energy transition with electric cars being, of course, uh, you know, the, uh, the star of the show, that mining is going to increase somewhere between three and ten times over the next 30 years. And of course, now we have to add deep sea mining to it, probably asteroid mining for the green uh, revolution. Says Mills, quote, if you're worried about carbon dioxide, the electric vehicle has emitted 10 to 20 tons of carbon di dioxide from the mining, manufacturing, and shipping before it even gets to your driveway. <clears throat> Volkswagen published an honest study in which they point out that the first 60,000 miles or so you're driving your electric vehicle that electric vehicle will have emitted more carbon dioxide than if you just drove a conventional vehicle. You would have to drive an electric car 100,000 miles to reduce emissions by just 20 or 30% which is not nothing, but it is not zero, close quote. Back to John. No, it's not. If you live in New Zealand, where there's lots of hydro and geothermal power, electric cars do pollute less, but in America, your zero emission vehicle adds lots of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Politicians and electric car sellers don't mention that. Most probably don't even know it. In a future column, three more inconvenient facts about electric cars, and I'm sure one of those will be about the batteries uh, you know, that whole big convoluted mess with the batteries. Uh, now, my guess, and again, since he hasn't come out with part two or I haven't found it yet, uh, is that he will not mention, and I'm not going to, you know, I've, I've had this rant before, so I'll just touch on it a little bit. He will not mention... Uh, besides the battery, that everything else about the car, whether it's electric or gas-powered, is, uh, it, it, it is the same impact on the planet. And when you add the battery onto the electric car, that the electric car takes more uh, you have to eat more of the planet to produce the electric car. And uh, now I don't think that, and the subset of that is the other thing that you never hear about is tires. Manga Bay has mentioned this several times. Tires don't care if they are put on electric or gas sucking cars. A car is a car, as far as a tire is concerned, and the rubber in the tires 
it's uh, between the, the amount of rainforest, particularly in Southeast Asia, with these damn rubber plantations. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it's almost up there with palm oil that the rubber in the tires uh, is, is all the same. Uh, no one talks about that. Just the ecological damage caused by tires. Uh, good Lord, how many tires have I gone through in my own gas-sucking trucks? And finally, the uh, again, the only person other than Sam Mitchell mentioning this is Rhett Butler from Manga Bay that cars, in, in, in my opinion, and I think Rhett would agree with me, that it's not even the cars, it is the roads that the cars drive down. Roads do not care whether the car driving up and down that road is electric or gas sucking. Roads. Roads. Road construction, road maintenance, uh, roads are a bigger danger to this planet than the cars that drive down them. It, uh, it take all the damage that this uh, that cars do to this planet and roads uh, do a hell of a lot more. Uh, nobody is talking about this. Uh, the single biggest threat to planet Earth from the automotive industry is not automobiles. It is road construction, which is another way of saying planet destruction. And uh, all of this crap uh, about electric cars saving the planet. It doesn't mean a damn thing. It, it is probably the single biggest bright green greenwashing lie of them all. You know, and, and I'm and I'm not saying don't get a damn electric car. Get you an electric car, but anybody, any clueless moron, most likely a lefty, a believing for one minute that trading in your gas-sucking car for an electric car is doing a goddamn thing to save this planet. You are so clueless that, uh, y y you know, uh, whatever, dude, if it helps you sleep better at night. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this rant. i got a long day tomorrow. I'm, I guess it's Friday. I have to go deal with more stuff with this gas-sucking truck. Anyway, and i got to... You know, call this guy about getting this new driveway rammed up the hill to my new tiny house so my Airbnb guests don't have to walk for two minutes. You know, people don't like to have to walk two minutes. So I uh, probably spend thousands of dollars ramming a road up the side of my mountain here. Anyway, how many salamanders am I going to squash? Anyway, get out there and enjoy your electric vehicle while you still can, or I should say, I guess, get out there and enjoy your gas-sucking vehicle while you still can. Bye, guys.